All right, welcome back, everybody. May the Most High bless you. I pray everybody's still having a wonderful, blessed weekend. Welcome back to another Bible study as we give the Most High all the honor, the glory, and praise. My title now says, Why Don't You Mind Your Own Business? Uh oh. Yeah, we got another hot topic, and we're going to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and we're going to deal with verses 1 through 12. Why don't you mind your own business? This is Paul. And what I like about Paul is that in this book, Paul shows Christians how to please God. And what better way is there to worship the Most High than to live pleasing into the Most High's ways? Doing things according to the way the Most High shows us. And a lot of times I notice in his life is that people can't move on because they're always up in somebody else's business. They can tell you how to run your life, but when they come to their own life, they don't have a clue. You can go ahead and say amen because I'm talking about kin folks, people on your job, people in the church. You look around and you see most people now, they experts on telling you how to live. You need to leave this person alone, you need to do this, but they spend so much time up in other folk business that they never mind their own business. The Bible, the Bible calls these type of people busybodies. And when I say busybody, I'm not talking about because you um, busy all the time and working over her and ripping and running over there. No, a busybody in this case is somebody you really don't want to be around. Busybodies will tear up the church. So Paul is talking to the Thessalonians here, and we see that there was people that wasn't minding their business. And then there was people that were minding their business because Paul is reminding people to remember, mind your business. But I have to go back to the beginning of this chapter because I don't like to just start with one scripture and just read. In, in, in this book, we're talking about um, verse 11. I don't want to just read verse 11 then leave y'all just stuck on it. What is he talking about? Because verse 11, it tells us and that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your hands as we commanded you. Now, what, what would you get out of that if I just read that? So we're looking at who doing the talking Paul. Who is he talking to? The Thessalonian believers. So if you have your Bibles, y'all, we're going to 1 Thessalonians once again, chapter 4, verses 1 through 12. And let me say this before we get started, because there's a lot of gossip, a lot of gossip in the house of God now. And if we would mind our own business, we'll get a whole lot more done versus all this gossiping and jealousy and, and, and getting into it with all this, you know, this, these folks like this. You got people who make make their business, your business, by putting you in the middle of their business. And we have to be careful because if you're not careful next time, you know you'll be gossiping. You'll be talking about folks. So here we go, y'all. Verse 1, it says, Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God so ye would abound more and more so Paul reminded them once again he's telling the Thessalonians you know what y'all since y'all belong to the Most High I urge you beseech we know what beseech mean I urge you some might say I beg you because you have been taught right but I, I, I continue to encourage you that you live as we taught you. Why? Because the way you live, as Sister B. Jackson says, thank you once again, Sister, your worship is a lifestyle. The way you live is your worship. So Paul is showing them once again, stay on track. Verse 2 says, For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. So they know. They was taught. How many of us have been taught, but yet and still, we want to continue to live a whole nother lifestyle against what the Most High told us to live. See, I, I did this this type of um, message here. It hits me very hard because I remember the way I used to live, how messed up I was, and and doing what I wanted to do. I didn't care nothing about God's way. I didn't care about Yahweh. It was JT way. It was no way at all. And I had to come out of that stuff. And I, I had to remember the will of the Father. Because verse 3 teaches us, verse 3 says, For this is the will of God, 
even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. I had a big problem with verse 3. Because y'all know me all the time. I would tell on myself. Fornication was me. And I'm not ashamed to say what I was when I was living my life of sin, when I was shacking up, how at times I would hoe around, thank, thank the most tired that I don't have no disease and I could have caught something from somebody. See, we don't want to say amen while we so busy talking about the one that got AIDS and, and herpes and all that stuff. It could have been us if we would just be real. It could have been us. I wasn't married. There was times I had unprotected sex. See, church don't like to talk about sex and fornication and, and sexual immorality, but I'm going to talk about it. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not like the ones in the buildings. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the body that love to her truth. It was God's will that I came out of that mess and dedicate my life to him. So when I looked at this verse 3, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from from fornication. I had to tell old girl, I ain't living right. You got to go. And once I got into the Holy Spirit, it was hard for me to let that go. But day by day, spending time with the Father, because the Father told me, you got to stay away from sexual immorality, brother. Y'all, how many of us had a problem with this scripture at first? How many of us got a problem with this scripture right now? Because it's not easy. Because we in flesh. See, my problem wasn't the love of money. My problem wasn't stealing. My problem wasn't drugs or whatever, you know, a lot of stuff is. My problem was being with old girl. Having sex when I wanted to. Shacking up. And to come out of that, see, once you get accustomed to doing something for so long, you don't just break it overnight, do you? We can say amen. So my problem was sexual sin. And sexual sin... Sexual sin is a hard sin to fight off. A lot of us don't want to admit that. That's why you got Christians right now still masturbating, still looking at porn, still sleeping around, still shacking up, but we don't want to talk about this stuff. Well, I'm going to talk about it. It's very hard to fight off a sexual sin, but is that too hard for the most high? No. You know what I learned? The only way to not be tempted around something is to not allow myself to be put in the situation to be tempted. So that means I had to lose phone numbers. I had to tell certain folks, don't come by no more. Forget I even exist in so many ways. That's the only way I'm going to fight off. Because the Lord always gives us a way to get out when temptation comes. We hear it, we see it, but a lot of times we reject it. Because we want to do what we want to do. So y'all, that was my struggle. And y'all know I done did videos about this more than once. We done talked about a lot of stuff. If we're going to ever reach somebody, we need to tell the truth. Verse 4 says that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Now go that word again. So Paul really gets a little bit deeper right here. He teaches us in verse 4, you need to learn how to control your own body. Paul is saying respect yourself because this is our temple. And we're supposed to treat it as a living sacrifice to be holy and acceptable. How was I holy and acceptable and I was living in sin? How was I holy and acceptable and I was running up an old girl? How was I holy and acceptable and sin keeps us keeps us further and further away from the, mo the most high. When the wages of sin is death, I was on my way to destruction. Verse 4 is also showing us, my brothers and sisters, we supposed to remember the covenant, which is being married, and, and our covenant with God. One point of time, I lost respect for everything because I had my way. Well, JT, all this you talking about, what does this have to do with your title of the video to mind your own business? Thank you for asking me that. Because when you mind your own business, stay out of other folk business, you ain't got time to be all up in their business because you spending your time working on yourself 
trying to get yourself right. When you mind your own business, you have a better relationship with the Most High. You don't have no distractions. When you mind your own business, you have your prayer life. When you mind your own business, your worship is for real. When you mind your own business, you stop answering that phone so much. When you mind your own business, you ain't got time to be on Facebook and tweeting everything that comes your way. When you mind your own business, you are focused. On the most high. Every day. Sanctification. To be set apart. To consecrate. To, to, to dedicate. To sanctify. How could you be set apart. When you living against the most high once again. Oh but if I mind. My business. I can stay focused. On the Lord. Verse 5, don't be controlled by your sexual urges like the Gentiles who don't know God. See, it's the difference between somebody who know the most high versus somebody who don't. Because when I was in my life of sin, I knew how to go to church. I knew how to sing, how to, how to play. I could mark somebody else, but I didn't know the ways of the Father. I was in the building, but I wasn't in the body, my brothers and sisters. I was too busy trying to be an old girl body. I wasn't thinking about the body of Christ to keep it real. We must learn better. And when we learn better, we should do what? Do better. Verse 6 says that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter because that the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also have forewarned you and tested. I love verse 6. Verse 6 is just simply saying, y'all, no way we should mistreat, not only mistreat, but we shouldn't either, we shouldn't take advantage of our brother or sister in this issue. The Lord punishes people for all things. This is what Paul's saying. He punished you for all things as we told you before and sternly warned you. So apparently Paul done spoke to them before about this. So a lot of times we need, y'all heard me say wake up call in these videos a lot. A lot of times I do wake up calls because some of us have forgotten what we're supposed to be doing and how we're supposed to be living. This message is not to, to, to condemn you and throw you in hell. I don't care who you are and what your problem is looking at this video. I love you. I don't embrace sin, but I do embrace, I, I, I embrace the sinner because all of us were something. Some of us are still something. And some of us just came out of something. And some of us don't want nobody to know that we are something. So I'm saying this out of love. This is just another wake up call. Because we should be living in holiness. Not hoishness. Verse 7 says, For God had not called us unto cleanness, but unto, unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Y'all see what I'm saying? Verse 8 says, He therefore that despises it, Despise it not man, but God, who had also given us the Holy Spirit. In other words, Paul broke this down. A lot of us don't look at it like this. But he's saying, whoever rejects these commandments, we can say all these instructions, you're not rejecting human authority. You are rejecting the Most High. That's the part that made me straighten up. I was to the point where I was trying to make sure I was living to the what the pastor said, where the pastor put it. See, the pastor told me, just believe. Uh-oh. The pastor told me, once saved, always saved. Uh-oh. This is what messed me up. So when he told me, just believe, and once saved, always saved, that pastor let me know that I could continue to live my life of sin. So you got to be careful with some of these teachings. I had a messed up understanding. And he kept me messed up. But oh brother, you you long as you in the body, brother, you believed, you you know what? You alright. You gonna slip up, but brother. Hey, don't look at that so bad. I had to look at verse 8 and be like, you know what? That verse, I needed somebody to teach me that long time ago. Because I didn't know I was pretty much rejecting the most high. Verse 9 says, but as Touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. In other words, Paul is saying, you don't need us to write about loving your brothers and sisters again. The Most High has already taught you how to love. The greatest commandment is love. The second one is just like it, ain't it? 
But how can you how can you say you love the father whom face you've never seen? And you don't even love your own brothers and sisters. See, if you really catch what I'm saying in these in these verses, this got a lot to deal with sexual immorality. Because anytime you deal with Jews and Gentiles, or we could say Gentiles, that ain't all the way there yet. Because you just like nowadays, you got you got people that still in sin in the world. And it was a lot of paganism, a lot of prostitution, a lot of sex going on. Paul ain't talking to the world, y'all. He's talking to the church. It go to show you how messed up church can be and how messed up a lot of churches are right now. I didn't say everybody's church. Verse 10 says, And indeed ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia, but we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more. In other words, Paul is saying, y'all got to continue to work harder and harder. I, I I urge you. I, I I pray for you. I continue to encourage you to keep living for Christ. Work harder and harder and harder because it don't. If you get around the wrong folk, you be you be back to where you was at. Verse eleven. Here it is. This is the verse most of us don't want to hear. And verse eleven says, "And that ye study to be quiet." And here it is, y'all. And to do your own business. And to work with your hands as we commanded you. Look at what he said first. Study to be quiet. Does this mean we shouldn't be concerned about each other? No. Paul is saying it's a time to talk. And it's a time to remain silent. Because some of us are talking so much that we missing what the Father is really showing us. But first he said be quiet. Then he said do your own business. And then he said work with your own hands. Look at that order. Shh, hush. Mind my own business and work with my own hands. Now, verse 12, as we as we look at the last scripture, it says that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. That's let me let me go back and make sure I'm saying that right. Okay, this once again is first Thessalonians chapter 4. Verses 1 through 12. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and most of all, the doers. Let me say that again. And most of all, the doers. Let me rewind that. Hey, I'm doers. And most of all, the doers. Because what's the use of studying, reading, if you ain't going to live it? Now, verse 11 is way deeper than we know. Because it was the church, uh-oh, come on, speak, Holy Ghost. It was the church that Paul told to mind their own business. Amen, lights. That goes to show you, once again, how messy church folks can be. And if you don't want to say amen, you one of the messy ones in the church that's causing all the mess and with all that gossip and lying and love misery. That's why, let me say this to these cliques in the church. That's why every church now look like it got a click in it. Or four or five people or maybe a little more that only associate with each other. Gossiping behind folk back. Mind your own business. But once again, first Paul said be quiet and then mind your own business. Now what, what else can we say with this? Well, let's go a little bit deeper. Thank you for asking me that. Because you got churches, let's say in a black community for sure, you got five or six churches on one street. And best believe out of them five or six, that one, you got members that came out of one of them ones that was on that street. Uh oh, I'm going somewhere with this video. Come on, Holy Ghost, talk to me. You got churches that's getting involved in other church folk business on the same street. Why would I say something stupid like that? Well, because you got people that have left one of the churches on that street, that have went to another church on that street, but they keep it in contact with the one at the church that they left, and they know each other's gossip. Uh-oh, Lord help us. I even heard a thunder going outside. It's about to rain. Why do you think such and such that came from New Mount such and such know all the business at New such and such Missionary Baptist Church because they still gossiping. 
Girl, you know over here we. Uh oh. Let me let, let me get like Pastor Cochran, PB Joy. That thing getting good to me. Girl, you know over here at that church they still doing. Mm hmm. Yeah, I know because your member still calling me. That's why I know about that deacon. That's why I know about that musician. We getting so caught up in mess that we ain't preaching the message. Oh, it's, 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 I'm sweating. Whew, it's hot up in the earth. But Paul said, shut up and mind your own business. That means even in these other churches, stop worrying about that business over there. That church ain't growing and yours ain't growing either. All these churches, mostly in the black community, are in the same spot. Still trying to get the building fund. All, I'm just talking what's real, y'all. I ain't talking about everybody, church. But the majority of churches in the in the black community are still trying to build a building. And they ain't got but a few members in there. If you are hanging around a busy body, get off and around them. Busy bodies, as I stated earlier in the video, Tire up the church. This verse 11 is no joke. Look at it, what it says at the end. Work with your own hands. You know why a lot of people can't work with their own hands? They too messed up in other folk business. Hmm. See, that working with your own hands go a long way with me. You cannot, you cannot go to, you cannot do kingdom building in church mess. Mm. See, some of us are more concerned about somebody else's spiritual growth in their life that we ain't even working on our own spiritual growth in our own life. You can go ahead and say amen. So, y'all, I, I didn't get this message from no seminary school. I didn't get this message from another preacher. JT, they asked me again yesterday, JT, where you get all this stuff from? My doctrine is coming from the Most High. You got the same book, I hope. We talking about the same Father, I hope it's in the it's in the word. Have you picked it up and read it? Because it's it's in the book. If you think I'm lying, do you see what I see? So this is not to condemn you, but once again, you mind your own business. Facebook is getting more attention than the Bible. Twitter has took over. All these reality shows, that's what more folks are in. And if you're listening closely at the reality shows when they come on, it'll tell you stay tuned for more drama. Mm. We want to stay tuned for more drama, but we don't want to stay tuned in with this word. I'm going to go ahead and close for now. There's a whole lot more I can say, but I'm going to go ahead and leave that thing alone. Y'all, thank you for um, tuning in. Until the next time, if it's in the most high's will, whatever he lays on my heart next, see you when I see you. I love you, and that's the reason why I keep doing what I do. Because if I didn't care and didn't love you at all, I'll leave you alone. But I'm here to reach out, to teach, to love, to do kingdom building. And I don't care what's wrong with you. If you want that change. Oh, thank you, Father, for... A lot of times, y'all, thank you, Father, for this. A lot of times we close out videos and uh, and we, we, we don't sometimes say what we need to say. And what I mean by it is that we always want to tell people wait on Sunday morning. Like the most tired only work on a Sunday, on a Saturday, on a Wednesday night Bible study. I don't care what day of the week it is because, see... I woke up this morning, but I got a phone call. Somebody else didn't wake up this morning. A whole lot of people didn't wake up this morning. Matter of fact, a whole lot of people didn't lie down last night. So why are you breathing? Because after you take that last breath, I know we got a lot of teachings out here. But why are you yet still living? The time is now. Come to the Savior. He'll take your misery and turn it into a ministry. He will make your life brand new. He will take care of you. Plead the blood. Say, Father, I'm tired of the way I live, been living. Father, Savior, let me say it like that. 
Because my, my Savior said if, if he would be lifted up, he would draw all men. Hmm. See, we too busy to keep talking about he died early Sunday morning. <laughs> he got up in three days and rose again. He been got off the cross. What have we been doing since he got off the cross? Are we out here reaching? Are we making disciples? Or are we just caring about ourselves? The Most High is waiting on you. Yahshua is the way. There is no other way. Even though they preach and Buddha can get you there. Allah can get you there. A lot of people can get you there. You're going to see in the long run. They all are history. The most high that we serve cannot die. And shoulder is not a statue that's going to fall over and break. I'm just being obedient in this video, y'all. So whoever you are, you don't have to wait on no Sunday morning. Say, I'm tired of this lifestyle. I repent. I was this. I was that. I don't want to be that no more. I want to be delivered. I want to be made whole. I want to be a new creature in Christ. I'm confessing. I'm repenting. I'm turning from Father. And I don't want that lifestyle no more. I'm ready. We try to make coming to Christ so hard now. Because you got to speak in tongue now. You got to run around five times now. You got to yell this out. I got to rub your stomach. So now, nah, man, forget all that. Coming to Christ is not that hard like people make it. It's a simple process. But it's all this mess that you see. I don't care if you're a gangster, a drug dealer, a homosexual, a pimp, a stripper, or whatever you are. You got time to get it right. Y'all, that's my time. I love you once again. This word is from the bottom of my heart. And I'm praying for you. Pray for me. But I don't want everybody praying for me. Because there's some folks out here praying some bad stuff on you. But y'all know who y'all are. So with that being said, let us learn from yesterday. Live for the day. Hope and pray for tomorrow. Peace.